the lower school as a as a transformation year for our for our students as they move from from children to to young adults and the the lower school is about uh, our students being able to get uh, good uh, GCSEs or develop good English language skills uh, but it's also an opportunity for them to try out new experiences um, and we offer a, a wealth of enrichment programs and academic societies to really get our students to, to move outside of their comfort zone uh, and challenge themselves so that they're well placed to cope with any future challenges that they might face. And it's a responsibility of myself and my uh, amazing uh, team of personal tutors to support and nurture our younger students through that, through that process. Um, just so you're aware, our lower school comprises of three year groups. So we've got a year nine, a year 10, and a year 11. Um, and I'm going to take the opportunity now just to explain to you a little bit more uh, as to what those year groups entail. So first of all, we have a, a year 11 group. So our year 11 is um, comprised of students that are on a one year fast track GCSE program or students that have moved up from our year 10 uh, program. Uh, and in the lower school, you every, every student has to study maths and English, uh, and that will either be GCSE English, um, GCSE English language, or um, they may uh, be able to do G GCSE English language and literature to obtain uh, two GCSEs in, within English, um, or um, they will do academic English uh, and achieve their, their IELTS qualification. And that will be uh, obviously the, the international students predominantly that would, would take the IELTS qualification. Um, they then have four uh, academic blocks to choose from. Uh, and you can see that they would choose between chemistry or art, biology or geography, physics or film studies, and economics or uh, business. And the only difference with our business qualification is it's a, a BTEC rather than a, a GCSE. Um, and our BTECs are more vocational uh, and they are assessed slightly differently to the, to the GCSE. So rather than having a, um, uh, an, an, an assessment at the end of the, the course, the BTEC has ongoing assessments uh, via uh, units that the students will, will complete. Um, you'll also see that uh, within the, uh, the program for a year 11 student, they have what is called uh, PSHE. Um, PSHE is, uh, is compulsory for students um, within the lower school, uh, and they're really about developing uh, students' uh, skills and understanding to lead confident, healthy and independent lives. So um, we'll teach them uh, uh, things about healthy eating, um, about uh, the importance of sleep uh, and the impact that uh, a good night's sleep can have on their, on their academic uh, uh, progress. Um, we'll also touch on uh, events that are happening uh, around the world at the time. So um, uh, in the summer, the Black Lives uh, Movement, um, Black Lives Matters Movement um, uh, in the aftermath of, uh, of George Floyd. Um, the pandemic, obviously, uh, and and how to keep uh, healthy during during a uh, pandemic, and 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 all those types of uh, those types of aspects. Uh, the other thing that lower school students will all um, uh, have on their timetable is sport, and sport takes place every every Friday afternoon. Uh, and again, the sports program, which is led by Sean Gallagher, who I'll introduce you to via his image later on because he's one of the personal tutors in the lower school. Uh, this, this, the idea of the sports program is to um, raise awareness about fitness, encourage healthy habits and improve um, students overall well-being. So we do a carousel of different sports so that the students are immersed in a wide range of different sporting activities. So that might be uh, yoga, uh, it might be spinning, uh, basketball, football, running, 
Um, so it really just gives them exposure to, to lots of different types of, of sport. And, and the, the aim here really is that they, they find something that they um, enjoy doing uh, and it encourages them when they move from the lower school into the upper school to maintain those healthy habits. Um, this PSHE uh, tutor, which I'll talk about later, and sport is something that's on every lower school student's timetable. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the other year groups, um, but just uh, take it as read that the PSHE and sport uh, is um, the same for those, those other year groups as well. So year 10 is um, really um, a year where we focus on embedding core knowledge and, and study skills. So you'll notice that the students in year 10 um, don't get given a choice of, um, of a program, but we're, we really just want to uh, give them quite a, a, a broad um, introduction to uh, uh, GCSE. Um, so that then when they move up into year 11, they can start to hone in their choices a little bit more. So again, in uh, year 10, the compulsory maths and English is, is taught. Uh, and then we also teach the students sciences, so we've got biology, chemistry and physics. Um, we, we also do business, art. And then the other offering that we have is what we call digital skills. Uh, and that's really uh, giving students the, kind of the fundamental skills to understand how to uh, use uh, OneDrive, how to use uh, Canvas, which is our, our uh, teaching and learning platform that the students use at DLD, uh, how to save a file, how to use PowerPoint. So all of those kind of core digital skills that will be integral to their, the other elements of their academic uh, study. In terms of the assessment criteria, so the students are in year 10 and year 11 are on a GCSE program and all GCSEs are externally access, assessed at the end of year 11 um, and dependent on the subject that's um, via exams and then some subjects have coursework and practicals as well. Our GCSE, uh, GCSE program is graded grade 9 to 1 so that's uh, equivalent A star to E. Uh, and typically, if you are looking to move on to an A-level or BTEC program, students will need to achieve a minimum of five GCSEs graded nine to four, and that includes maths and English. If a student is doing IELTS instead of a GCSE, uh, the GCSE English, um, just so you're aware, the IELTS exam is also externally assessed um, and there are two testing points in the academic year, either December or, uh, uh, sorry, uh, typically December and May. And in, within the IELTS, there's four components that the students have to, uh, that the students are assessed on. That's reading, writing, speaking and listening. Um, and with regards to the levels that they have to reach, uh, year 10 students need to be 4.0 IELTS. Uh, in year 11, it's 4.5. Uh, year 12, uh, if they are uh, aiming to go on to an A-level or BTEC programme, it's 5.5. Um, and we also offer the International Foundation programme, which is our year 14, uh, and the entry requirements or IELTS for that course is 5.0. Um, and then students will be prepared um, for university uh, and they need to be achieving a minimum of 6.0 for university. Um, some universities will have higher entry requirements with regards to, to IELTS um, and students when they get into the upper school will work with their personal tutor and their, their director of studies to ensure that they reach that level. Finally, in the, the lower school, we have uh, a year nine. Um, our year nine is, is slightly different to what you might expect in a, in a, a domestic school. So um, our year nine is uh, aimed at our international students. Uh, and it's a, a year for our students really to develop their English language skills. Um, but our year nine is called an academic preparation course. So as well as developing English language skills, uh, we're also looking at developing their core academic skills. 
um, so that the students are well placed to move on to either a GCSE program, uh, an A-level or BTEC program, or our IFP. So our, our year nine course is quite unique in the sense that students will have uh, a number of different pathways available to them, um, dependent on their age and dependent on the IELTS score that they achieve by the end of that, that year nine program. I wanted to touch on our GCSE results. We're, we were very proud of the GCSE results we have achieved at DLD. So um, in 2019-2020, 45% of our students were graded nine to seven, which is equivalent to A star to A, um, which is above the national average, which stands at 27.6%. 29% of the results were graded nine to eight. So 29% of our students were achieving the equivalent of an A star and 64% of our students achieved grade nine to six. So that's A star to B. And then 96% got grades nine to four, which is A star to C. And then a third of our students achieved nine to six A star B in all of their subjects. And over a fifth of our students, which is 22%, achieved at least a grade nine. And I think it's worth, also recognising the, um, the impressiveness of these results in that uh, the students that achieved those results were on our one year intensive GCSE programme. So, so it makes it even more impressive, um, the achievements of our students. And then looking at some of our um, uh, subjects that achieved 100% pass rates, so uh, all students got either an, a grade nine to grade four, uh, that was achieved in our English language and English literature courses, our biology, chemistry and geography courses, and also our economics courses. So we're very proud of those, those results and the achievements of our, our students. Integral to the, the lower school is how we support uh, learning for our students and how we are, have ongo an ongoing um, process of tracking uh, our students' learning. Um, so students will take milestones, uh, mock exams and progression exams throughout the year. And that's really an opportunity for us to be able to check in on uh, our students' progress uh, and make uh, uh, alterations, interventions to ensure that they uh, they continue to, to improve and they continue to, to reach their targets and aspirations. Um, and that's supported through regular meetings with their, their personal tutor uh, and also uh, a series of progression meetings that they hold uh, with me as the, the head of lower school. Um, other uh, systems that we have in place to support uh, academic progress are uh, study clinics, which are um, organized by our different departments. Uh, we have a, a student dashboard, which has a, a very well-developed teaching and learning section. Uh, and that's really been designed for our students to, um, to use outside of the classroom uh, as part of their independent study uh, and uh, work to developing their, their core academic skills. Uh, we also have uh, mentors who support the lower school uh, students. So that's Students in the upper school that have gone through the GCSE program will have weekly meetings with our students in the lower school. Every single student in the lower school is assigned a mentor, uh, and so they, they have access to uh, that older uh, member of our DLD community on a, on a weekly basis. Uh, and those mentors are also very good at unpicking any, um, any academic concerns and feeding those back to myself as the head of lower school, um, so that I can work with my uh, personal tutors and I can work with subject teachers to support the students in the lower school. We also have a number of uh, enrichment um, and academic society opportunities, and I'm going to touch on those in, a, in future slides. Uh, but we're, we're really looking at developing the skills of our students beyond the curriculum. We, we feel that the uh, offering uh, a good um, curriculum offering and um, 
helping our students achieve good results is the is a bare minimum of what we should do but we really need to enrich them beyond the curriculum so that they are um, able to um, be competitive when they go to, to university uh, and they're equipped to be competitive when they go out into the job market. Uh, on top of that, our departments organise a range of exciting academic trips um, and we have uh, inspirational speakers that come in to the school um, or, or currently uh, we're doing that virtually for obvious reasons. Um, and then in the lower school, uh, those students that are boarders also have a daily evening study uh, and the, the evening study is um, managed by a team of uh, academic uh, staff who uh, again are on hand to, to monitor um, the students progress in terms of their homework uh, to support them in one-to-one -one, um, meetings during that time and again communicate back to teaching staff where they identify uh, any uh, areas that students require further, further support. Uh, and that then leads into our kind of targeted interventions, targeted academic support. I mentioned earlier the, the extensions to learning. So um, we have um, a, a range of academic societies within, within the college, um, and that's uh, our kind of super, super curriculum that helps to um, develop our students' uh, subject interest, develop their ability to research, um, promote the idea of them working independently and being uh, self-motivated, um, broadening their subject knowledge uh, and uh, eyes on the prize is, is really think, getting them to think about uh, the future and uh, being, being uh, aspirational and ambitious with their, with their goals. Uh, and you can see that there's a, a really wide range of academic societies on offer. Um, and the, the great thing from a lower school student's perspective is that they have the opportunity to engage with uh, A-level students, to engage with different members of the uh, academic team that they might not see on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but they also get to touch on subjects that are offered at A-level that aren't available at GCSE so that they're able to make the right um, uh, choices when they move up into the, into the upper school. So there's a, a lot of focus here on their, on their progression and their future. We're also really lucky with our location. Uh, we're right in the centre of London uh, and our principal, Irfan, uh, always mentions that London is our classroom. And, and that's a really good point because we have so many different things on our doorstep that support and extend on our students' learning. So, museums, galleries, um, university lecture, lectures. Uh, we've got many, many libraries, the British Library, concert halls, uh, unlimited opportunities because we are in the heart of London. And so that makes it a very exciting place for our students to, to study. Uh, and it gives them huge, huge opportunity to, to build, on their, build on their skills and, and in the future make them stand above, uh, above uh, other potential candidates for university or, or careers in the future. We also have a, a really um, exciting range of co-curricular activities. Uh, on, on the screen, we've got a sample of what we were running during, during lockdown recently. Um, again, this is about uh, encouraging our students to, to take risks in the sense that they try something that they haven't tried before. So if we have a student that's really um, a, a talented science student, we might be getting them to uh, go to an, an art um, CCA to, to try something different and develop their skills in, in other ways. But we might also have a, a student who's very gifted um, within economics. Uh, they know that that's their, their, their future. So we've got things like finance uh, CCAs available to them. Um, the, the great thing about our CCAs is that we are um, flexible, so we do listen to our students and if there's something that we're not currently offering um, and a, a student comes to us and is really keen for that CCA to be, to be offered, then we, we are flexible in being able to make, make that happen. Um, so I would say that 
what you see on the screen is only really a snapshot of what of what we offer and the, the potential available for our students. This is uh, the structure of, of the day. Um, so you can see that there are uh, 11 per uh, periods during the day um, and each uh, single period is 35 minutes in length. Uh, at the top of the day, uh, if a student is a boarder, they have breakfast from 7.30 um, and then from 8.45 to nine o'clock, they see their tutor um, and that takes place every single day of the week. Um, and we think that's really, important that our students have a that check-in point uh, with their tutor on a daily basis because it's an opportunity for uh, students to uh, raise any concerns to celebrate successes um, and also for our personal tutors who who know those students the best to be able to um, to look the, the students in the eye and and um, make sure that their their overall well-being is uh, is good um, and just set them up for the day. Um, right at the end of the day, between four and five, we, that's when our enrichments take place. So that might be the co-curricular activities, academic societies, um, the study clinics that we, that we mentioned earlier. Um, and then students can then go on to have their evening meal between six and seven. Uh, and then evening study is from seven to eight. This is the, the team in the lower school. Um, so these are the people that will get to know the students the best. Um, so there's my, myself um, as the uh, assistant principal head of lower school. Uh, on the left, we've got Sean Gallagher, who is our head of sport and head of uh, co-curricular. Uh, and he's also a, a personal tutor for um, year 11s. Uh, Charlie Pinnell, who's our uh, head of SEN uh, and is also the um, personal tutor for, for the year 11s. Uh, just to the right, we've got Alex McClintock, uh, who looks after our year 10 students, and John, uh, who looks after the year 9. And then in the middle uh, is Nicola, um, and Nicola works in the, the boarding house, uh, and she is a, a member of the, the lower school team and really helps to create that link between um, uh, the school uh, and the boarding so that um, Nicola can be on hand to um, pick up on uh, any um, academic concerns uh, that, that we need support with in the evening. Um, she can also, um, we also kind of liaise regularly uh, from a pastoral perspective uh, and Nicola is there also to celebrate with our with our students. Uh, we, we feel it's really important that there's ongoing recognition of the, of the achieve, achievements of our younger students and we find that really motivates them to keep, to keep pushing and to be the best uh, version of themselves that they can possibly be. Um, so with our personal tutor team there's ongoing uh, support, they see their personal tutors every single day uh, and they also see myself every single day uh, and I also work in boarding as well. So uh, I'm a very visible uh, person to all of the students in, in the lower school. And just to give you a, 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 a snapshot of a typical week um, in the lower school in terms of the personal tutor sessions, on a Monday, we have uh, what we call the FTP, which is from the principal. Uh, so our principal, Irfan, delivers an, an assembly uh, to uh, all members of the school on a Monday. Then on a Tuesday, that's when we have our longer PT session um, and um, they might be on a variety of, of different topics um, and tend to pick up on events that are going on around the world at the time. Uh, Wednesday, uh, our PTs will, will review um, the session from the Tuesday and pick up on any questions and, uh, and uh, get feedback from the students. On Thursday, we, um, we have a book club. So um, the students uh, are, are reading a book together with their, um, with their personal tutor. Uh, and then on Friday, we have um, a, a whole lower school assembly. Uh, and that's an opportunity to announce the, um, the weekly house point tally, uh, celebrate successes, launch competitions, um, have other members of staff coming in to, uh, 
to make uh, announcements on students of the week. So we might have student of the week in art, for example. Um, and uh, it's also a good way just to uh, review the week that the students have had uh, and kind of create a sense of resetting going into uh, the, the next week. I mentioned we have a house system. I, I'm a huge fan of the, the house system um, at the lower school. I, I myself went to Cranley School and had um, and was uh, experienced the house system. And I think it's a really, a really important um, uh, part of the experience for, for the lower school. Part of the, the reason for it is it helps them to develop their community spirit um, and creates a sense of, uh, of belonging. Um, but it's also there to help raise academic excellence and motivation through targeted house competitions. And so what we're, what we're really doing is um, stretching, encouraging our students to stretch themselves uh, and ensure that they uh, take advantage of the unique learning experiences available at, at DLD College. Um, and we found our students are, have become really engaged in the, in the house system um, because we're announcing every week the, the house points um, that the students have achieved and that house points are achieved either by winning house competitions or uh, by being awarded them by their, their subject teachers. Um, there's a real sense of uh, excitement every, every Friday when we come to announce those, those house points. The other thing is the, the house competitions. Um, you'll see at the, in the bottom picture, we've, this is our, our house debating um, competition that the students took part in. And that was, um, that was focused around um, inspirational uh, um, characters within, within different academic offerings. So it, it allowed the students to, to really develop their, their subject knowledge, but also to understand uh, those different key people who have, um, who have inspired the subjects that they're, that they're studying. Um, and we've got had a number of other different uh, house competitions that, that run through through the year. Um, the other the other great thing about the house competition is it uh, also encourages our students to step outside of their comfort zone. So because we've had art competitions as an example, um, students who didn't necessarily think of themselves as art have uh, have got involved in in those competitions. Likewise. And singing competitions or um, talent shows, uh, it, it enables our students to to do things that they perhaps wouldn't wouldn't normally do, and I, I think that's important in their long term growth that they are uh, they're kind of they're not they're not remaining in their their comfort zone, but they're they're pushing themselves. I want to just um, finish up before we move into questions on some uh, frequently asked questions. Um, so one of the questions I get asked frequently is um, how do we support uh, progression at, uh, at DLD? Um, I've kind of touched on, on that earlier, but um, the, the regular assessments are uh, a really good way of us um, uh, measuring and monitoring where, where the students are uh, and being able to put in place uh, the right academic interventions to, to help them make improvements. Um, this is supported through regular personal tutor meetings uh, and also through those regular uh, progression meetings um, that I will have with them after every single assessment period. Um, so, so it's a way to um, check that they're, they're engaging in their, um, their progress, that they understand what they need to do to improve, um, but also then that we're having that opportunity to um, track and monitor that they have made those improvements since their, since their previous meeting. Um, and so there will be um, interventions uh, are put in place and uh, to track their, their progress. Academic societies, I think, are a really important way to, to support progression, uh, particularly as the academic societies allow our students to take part in um, subjects that they aren't necessarily studying in the lower school. Uh, and we also organise taster days so that our students are able to make the right uh, progression choices as they move from lower to upper school. 
I also get asked if a student does not do well, what are their options? Well, first of all, what I would say uh, about that is our, I think our results speak for themselves. Um, and so um, we don't anticipate that students um, uh, won't do well. Uh, and I believe that we have the right support in place and that we are, are tracking their progress frequently enough that, that this shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't happen. However, um, the, um, what, what I would say is that as a, as a head of lower school, I, I'll have regular contact with parents and agents um, throughout the year uh, so that we can discuss options. Uh, and we also have a wide range of course options uh, available here at DLD, meaning that uh, progression options will uh, usually be available. I've also been asked um, frequently what measures are in place to support the younger students. Um, uh, and this refers to measures for safety and to, uh, to mitigate from the distraction of, uh, of London. Um, so, First of all, uh, a student that's in the lower school is uh, regarded as a of compulsory school age. Um, and I'm a designate, designated deputy safeguarding lead, uh, and I'm responsible for all CSA students. So, so I have a very um, good visibility on our, on our students, and I will, I will track that they're where they should be via our, our um, attendance register, uh, and also via a system that's used in boarding, which is called REACH, um, which uh, allows us to track where, where students are. Um, the location we're in is very safe. Um, so this part of London is not, is not unsafe. Uh, and when students arrive at the school, they're given uh, a tour as part of their induction. Um, and we also invite the local police in who deliver uh, an induction about keeping safe in London um, and that's that's a very close relationship we have with the local police and they attend the college on a on a regular basis the other thing is uh, any students in the lower school um, has a very busy timetable anyway um, so for that reason uh, there is an expectation that they remain on site during the day uh, so they're not allowed to leave the building um, and their their cards they use for entering and leaving the building are programmed so that they can't leave the building during the day. Um, they also wear purple lanyards, uh, different from students in the upper school uh, who have a black lanyard. Um, so the reception staff know that anyone with a purple lanyard can't leave the building. Um, so we have we have lots of uh, eyes on our on our students. Um, low school students can go out in the evening um, as long as um, uh, it's after even, evening activities and evening study um, but there's a rule that they have to go out in a group of three or more um, and they have a curfew of 9 30 so they have to be back in the building at 9 30. Um, we also are, have make sure all our students have a mobile phone um, so that they're contactable at all times and finally, any student, when they do leave the building, they must tap out using a system that we use called REACH. Um, and they have to uh, put onto REACH exactly where they are going. Um, and if they change locations, they have to make contact with house parents to, to ensure that house parents know that they've changed locations. Um, so, there's lots of different uh, measures in place to to make sure that our students are are kept uh, kept safe the other the other question about um, distractions in in london um, i mentioned earlier london is our classroom um, it's that's a really integral uh, message that we reinforce to our students uh, we, and we make sure that they have exposure to all of the positive things that there are to do in london which are good for their academic growth um, and so um, my belief really is that because they have so much exposure to to those um, uh, kind of learning opportunities of London that's really how they they view London London is a, a city of opportunity from an academic perspective and then my final uh, frequently asked question, which is um, obviously quite topical, is uh, regarding safety measures 
that are in place um, for COVID. Um, we are very well looked after in terms of our um, um, COVID measures. Um, Gareth Hockey um, who is, is in charge of, um, of our COVID measures and um, we follow the government advice very, very closely um, to ensure um, that uh, all possible safety measures are in place. And so some of the, some of the things that we are currently doing, um, face masks are worn around the college and in classrooms. We have a, a one-way system around the college so that we can ensure that um, uh, we can socially distance as we walk around the building. Uh, there's a limited number of students that are allowed uh, in the lift up to the boarding house, and that's um, uh, effectively looked after by the house parents to ensure that that is complied with. Uh, we have hand sanitizer stations uh, all around the college building. Um, we're taking part in lateral flow testing so that students and staff are testing themselves on a regular basis and that's being reported back to the principal uh, and also onto the NHS uh, track and trace system. Uh, there are PVC screens around the college. Um, so in our dining hall, uh, there are PVC screens um, on the benches so that um, students can, can eat and so socially distance properly. Uh, and we also have staggered lunches so that um, we limit the flow in the, in the global kitchen. Uh, and then the other thing to, to point out is um, uh, we have small class sizes anyway. So um, we have a far better ability at keeping our students safe because we've always embraced this idea of of small class sizes to support um, teaching and learning. And so um, that's the end of my presentation. I, I hope it's given you a snapshot of what it's like to be a, a student in the lower school at DLD College. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, if I'm unable to answer at this time, I will will come back to you with, with uh, any answers. Um, and uh, I'm happy uh, to pass on my email address. Um, maybe Rachel can write that in the chat box. So if you did want to ask me any questions after this event, um, you're very, very welcome to send me an email and I, I'll, I'll come back to you. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Gareth. Um, I've just passed on that email address for everybody in the chat. Um, if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to um, either put them in chat or on the Q&A function. Um, Gareth, we did have one question whilst you were talking about the academics. Um, yeah. and that was from um, somebody who wanted to know, um, how do you decide which students take IELTS and which students should do GCSE English? Is there a difference um, and which one would be better for university progression? Um, so so um, a, a, a domestic student would, would only be able to take GCSE uh, English. Um, the IELTS is for our uh, uh, academic, sorry, international uh, students. Um, but what we do when the students enroll, we, we assess our students to, to make sure that they're in uh, the right the right program yeah. um, it's it's not it's not a case of one being better than the other uh, both are requirements at university so it's either you have GCSE or IELTS uh, but what we do find is that international students um, cope better with the assessment um, process of the IELTS compared to the, the GCSE um, and, and that's really down to the way that they've traditionally been taught, taught English. Great. So for a domestic, would they take English uh, language and English literature? Um, so they would, they would be enrolled initially onto English, um, English language. Uh, mm -hmm. English language is the, the, the compulsory one that students must achieve a minimum of a grade four uh, in order to, to progress. Um, and that is a requirement of the universities as well, that they need a grade, a grade four. Uh, okay. And then after the, the, the first um, uh, milestone, the head of department for English will then uh, make a decision which students are 
um, able to also take English literature. Um, and that will be students that are, are more able because they uh, will, there's um, eight, eight lessons for English. Um, so if you're doing English language, you'll do eight lessons. If you do English language, English literature, you do four language, four literature. So um, you're, it's a more intensive uh, course. Okay. So if you haven't done year 10, um, yeah. is it an issue to go straight into year 11? Uh, no, it's, it's not. So you can, uh, you, obviously age, age dependent, um, uh, but you, you can go straight into year 11. Um, the key criteria, um, if you're an international student, is the IELTS needs to be um, 4.5. Okay. And do year 11s join the year 10s that have moved up into year 11, or do they have their own separate classes? Um, they'll be joining the, the year 10s that have already been okay. here for year. So does that mean if you join in year 10, that when you get to year 11, subject to your progression, you are able to then um, do some extra GCSEs, start some extra GCSE courses in year 11? So, um, so when you move, so year 10 would be the, uh, the, the year where you develop your core academic skills. And then um, year 11, um, you are able to then make choices as in terms of the subjects that you're going to choose. Um, of course, there's, there's always flexibility. So if a student is particularly able, then we, we may be able to enter them uh, for a GCSE in year 10. Fine. Okay, that's that's clearer. Thank you. Um, so, with regards to their timetabling, do they have any free periods at all? For and if if they do, what what happens during those free periods? Um, so, uh, it, it's very rare that a student will have uh, a free period, um, other than for lunch, obviously. Uh, on the, on the occasion that they they do, and that's that's if um, there's been a particular reason that one GCSE has been removed, uh, maybe at the request of the the parent, then they would they would be placed into supervised study. Okay. Um, where they would have a, a, a member of the academic team supervising uh, them, and it's an opportunity for them to work uh, to, to to do their homework. But I, I would say it's quite it's quite rare for a lower school student to have free time on their timetable. Okay, brilliant. Um, and then, so when they're thinking about which what to progress onto, which courses for the upper school, um, just thinking about the GCSE subjects, do they have to take certain subjects to be able to progress onto certain courses? You know, what's available for them, and how do we support them in? which uh, the advice that we give them in selecting those courses? So um, there are there are some courses that would have specific entry requirements to study them at, um, at A level. And that that will be your your mathematics, um, where you'd need a minimum of a grade six to to be able to study that at A level uh, and your your sciences as well. Um, but uh, what what you will notice is that we we offer more subjects at a level um, and there are subjects that students wouldn't have studied at gcse um, and those subjects you don't need to have studied at gcse to be able to study them at a level so for example example media studies um, is not offered at gcse but you would be able to study at, at a level um, and and really that's because the the gcse program that we have is about developing core skills so that you have transferable academic skills to move on to those other those other subjects. Um, it's a bit like art. We we offer art at A level, but then when you get into sorry, we offer art at GCSE, but when you get into the A level, you've got graphics and photography as options, which uh, you wouldn't have studied them at GCSE, but you would have developed the academic skills to be able to then move on to those more advanced subjects. Brilliant, thank you for that. Um, just on co-curriculars um, side, um, for sports, if somebody's particularly talented at football, say, are they able to join the senior teams to play um, some of team sports? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, so the, 
the co-curricular uh, activities and the academic societies are not lower school, upper school um, split. They are uh, they're integrated, and um, and that's really important because we do want to expose our younger students to to older students so they can uh, be exposed to different academic uh, experiences, but also that they can be uh, exposed to uh, our, our kind of role role models within within the school. Fantastic. Um, I think we're on to a final question, unless any of our attendees have anything else that they'd like to um, ask of us today. Um, just uh, then somebody wanted to know um, how, what's the average number of people in the lower school? How many students do you have on average? Yeah, so um, typically we have um, a, around uh, 50 to 60 students in, a, in, a, in the lower school. So that's, um, that includes year nine, 10 and 11. Um, and from a classroom size, typically classroom sizes will, will be between 10 and 12 in the lower school. 10 and 12. Great. Um, so we have got uh, another question that's just arrived. Um, what percentage of boarders are there in the lower school and do boarders and day students mix, mix well? Um, I, I don't know the exact percentage. So I need to come back to you on that, but I, I would guess this year it's around 80%. I think predominantly our lower school students are, are boarders. Um, but in terms of do day and, day and boarding students mix, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, day students are welcome to attend evening study and some of them, some of them do. Uh, they're welcome to stay for e evening dinner. They, they, they attend the CCAs. Uh, they're also invited to attend uh, boarding events at the weekend as well. So uh, we find that our, our lower school are very integrated and, and the house system has been uh, a really, uh, really key in, um, in kind of enhancing that integration as well. Yeah, and I've been in classes as well, and I can see how well the day students mix with the boarders and how much they benefit from the multicultural and the multinational um, environment that, uh, and what they're exposed to. It's, it's really lovely to see. So I hope that answers your question, Oliver, and we'll come back to you with um, an exact percentage. Um, so thank you very much, Gareth. We don't have any more questions today. It was really insightful and very informative and um, we appreciate your time and the busy day. So thank you again. Um, so to our attendees, don't forget to register for our open evening on um, Thursday the 13th of May um, and we'll say goodbye from London. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. bye.